Remember when Kanye did this? I need you to run right back, baby. More specifically, carefully. If you're not familiar, that was Kanye performing to probably his largest crowd on record at the Larry Hoover Benefit Show. Over 70,000 people watched as he called out for his ex-wife to run right back to him. Kanye didn't just pick a random song to relay this message through. It was at the very end of an extended outro for Runaway, a track off of his 2010 album, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. However, this isn't the first time that Ye's used Runaway to get something off his chest. In fact, he almost always uses the outro of Runaway to let people know what's on his mind. From the debut of the song at the 2010 VMAs, all the way through the life of Pablo Tour. And if you really take the time to walk through each of these performances throughout the years, you start to see a more clear narrative forming around Ye, his relationship with the media, his relationship with other people, and more importantly, himself. I'm not gonna dissect the meaning of Runaway itself in this video. I actually think there's already a beautiful video essay out there that does that by Alpha Media. For now though, just for foundational purposes for this video, just know that Runaway is a song about Kanye owning up to his own faults. When Runaway premieres, he's dealing with a handful of some pretty tough issues. The the big three that come to mind are the death of his mother, Donda, in a plastic surgery mishap, his marriage to model Amber Rose kind of falling apart, and probably most notoriously the backlash he got for interrupting Taylor Swift at the VMAs. That last item made Kanye one of pop culture's most hated figures for maybe a whole year. And I think that's why so many people reference that event when they talk about Runaway, because Runaway almost seems like Kanye's internal resolution to problems like that. In the song, he basically admits to all of his faults, but he does not apologize for them. Instead, he plows through the only way he knows how as a celebrity on display, by being arrogant and being Kanye, which are kind of just the same thing. So without further ado, let's take a look at these performances. The first time Kanye goes off script for an outro of Runaway is relatively subtle compared to what he does for other outros. In 2011 at Coachella, he slips in the question, Me, this reads out as Kanye calling out to his previous significant other before Kim Kardashian, Amber Rose. Amber was essentially there for all those three big, terrible life events I mentioned earlier, right? She was with Kanye through his darkest hour. And it sounds like Kanye isn't really too proud of how he treated her during those times, and he kind of recognizes that he is at fault for her deciding to run away. Fast forwarding just under a year to a runaway performance in Melbourne, Australia kind of solidifies this. She told me, I gave you all my life. she is Amber telling Ye this as she's about to leave him. She really gave her all for him and he still kind of didn't really treat her right. Ye then elaborates. If I told you I don't like the shoes you were wearing at night, don't listen to me, baby, because I'm an asshole. If I didn't tell you I loved you every single minute, I was with you. If I didn't tell you I loved you every single second, I was with you. If I didn't tell you I loved you. If I didn't tell you I loved you. If I didn't tell you I loved you, don't listen to me, baby, because I'm an asshole. What I find interesting about this language is that it centers around the word if, which is kind of implying that Kanye almost can't even remember how he treated Amber in the moment because he was in such a bad place mentally. He's taking her words for truth because he loves her, but also because it's kind of his only choice. He admits the way that he was acting was on some kind of angry autopilot and finishes up with, He even doubles down on that asshole line in his 2013 GovBall performance, adding, Kanye is fully taking blame for his actions here, but he's never outright apologizing, which as we talked about earlier, is kind of what Runaway is all about. I think it makes sense that once Kanye kind of gets a handle on things romantically with Kim, he shifts his focus and self-reflection efforts toward his career. If you're a Kanye fan, you know that Kanye likes designing clothes as much, if not more, definitely more, than making music. And that was a point he kind of crusaded on in Yeezus interviews. He would often criticize these glass ceilings and limits that would come to combat his design ideas because of either the color of his skin his vocation as a musical artist, or his just outspoken nature. They said because I'm known for music that no one would believe in me if I designed anything else. 
Probably the most notable example of this is Kanye's struggle with Nike over the Red Octobers. Yeah, he had a deal with Nike to do some shoes with them, but Nike never really treated him like a priority. Release dates were ambiguous, communication was slim, etc., etc. And overall, he just felt undervalued by the partnership. And to boot, Nike never ended up agreeing to giving Ye royalties off the shoes he designed for them. At a show in Philly, he makes the point. Because I don't go on these interviews and try to get people to like me. I go on these interviews to try to get people to like themselves. And back at that outro in Miami, he goes on to say, I am Walt Disney. I am Steve Jobs. I am Howard Hughes. I am Mandela. I am Malcolm X. I am JFK. I am Henry Ford. I am Michelangelo. I am Picasso. You know why? Because I'm all of you. And you give me the power! He knows no one in the media would yield him the comparisons to the people he lists out, so he goes on to affirm them for himself. He almost paints himself as a martyr for society's dreamers. Like almost a, I'm running up against every societal limit and testing every construct just to show you how fallible it is, and how it's actually not as much in your way as you may think. In my opinion, this was the boldest era of Kanye. He was letting his heart and ideas bleed out on every interview, constantly being called rude, nuts, inconsiderate, whatever, and maybe he was to a degree. But he kept carrying on, not caring even doubling down, and that's the spirit of Runaway. I'm not crazy. I'm not out of control. I'm just not in their control. Towards the end of the Yeezus show, Ye kind of calms down a bit with his frustration toward the media and society, and closes a show in Sydney with... And all things are possible through love. And you know, I could just look at, look at my wife's eyes and look at my daughter's eyes and see the possibilities in life. This was honestly, I think, the only outro that got that happy or uplifting. And in the context of doing this video, it was kind of emotional to watch. So now you think, all right, great, that's awesome. Ye is invigorated by himself and the support from others. And he has a pretty noble message that he crusades with at the end of Runaway. This is basically the full redemption arc from Donda, the VMAs, and Amber, right? Unfortunately, I think things take a bit of a turn for the worse. 2016 sees the release of Ye's seventh studio album, The Life of Pablo. And yet again, he finds himself at odds with the Swifties. Over what this time? That famous line, infamous. Taylor approved the line, I feel like me and Taylor might still have sex, or at least she was open to it being in the song. But she definitely did not approve the line, I made that bitch famous. And that's where the feud began again. I'm not gonna get into the whole thing, like detailing all the drama, because A, it's very old news, and B, it's kind of irrelevant to the point here. All you need to know is that Kanye got in some pretty hot water on the internet yet again. He was in the same position as he was in 2009, absolutely hated by the media, and the Taylor Swift army. And in the spirit of Runaway, what do you think Kanye does? Doubles down. The biggest example of this doubling down is when Kanye finds himself back at the 2016 VMAs to accept the Video Vanguard Award. Off rip, Kanye walks out to Famous, the line in question, wearing a shirt that looks like it's designed by Virgil Abloh, rest in peace, that says Famous on the front. And I won't dive into the details of the speech, but he opens with the lines. I am Kanye West, and that feels really great to say, especially this year. And once again, Kanye, despite everything, showing the world that he is doubling down on who he is, that he still co-signs himself. And despite everything, I don't mean just famous. I mean despite his Cosby Innocent tweet, people making fun of him for asking Mark Zuckerberg for funding, calling out Wiz Khalifa for having a child with his ex-wife, and outwardly supporting Trump. The way Kanye goes about this doubling down and showing the world that he still co-signs himself isn't as sweet and wholesome and triumphant as it was in the VMA speech. The runaway outros for the Pablo tour were a lot more angry than the other ones, and it was very specifically directed at the media a lot of the time. And it's a bit interesting considering that in the 30 minute film that Kanye made for Runaway, the very first line of the movie is, First rule in this world, baby, don't pay attention to anything you see in the news. But in this era of Runaway outros, Kanye does not seem to be great at taking his own advice. Some quotes include, I die on the internet every day for y'all. If I gotta be like, everybody else be like, and I don't want to be like So I would rather follow God than to follow the media 
despite this idea of martyrdom at the hands of the media and forging your own path despite what others say still rings true, it gets to a point where it spirals a bit out of control. At the last St. Pablo performance, Kanye doesn't even get to run away in the set list. He cuts the set at Famous pretty early and goes on a rant about Jay-Z, Trump, Obama, the music industry, Kid Cudi, and a plethora of other topics. And unfortunately, this is where our ability to analyze Runaway gets cut off. There's a gap in live performances of the song from that date on because, well, Kanye hasn't really had a cohesive album tour since then. So what can we take away here? Well, I think we have a pretty solid Kanye arc to follow. The earlier outros to Runaway stay pretty true to the meaning of the song. Ye accepts a ton of responsibility for not only the relationships in his life and how they've gone, but for all the people he may have wronged along the way as an egomaniac and a victim of media portrayal and celebrity. He powers through those wrongdoings not with an apology, but with a doubling down on his character. On the Yeezus tour, after realigning himself romantically, Ye shifts to how that confidence and character and identity has extended into career goals and dreams with regards to entertainment, fashion, you name it. He uses this struggle to portray a story of martyrdom to inspire his fans to go achieve their dreams. On the same Pablo tour, I think perhaps with Trump crying all the way to the office fake news, Kanye hones in on how he feels the media doesn't accurately portray his thoughts, words, and actions, and how they're simply against him at all costs because he's not like everybody else. Then that spirals out of control and Kanye takes some time for himself. We get Ye, Jesus is King, and eventually Donda. Finally arriving at the Larry Hoover show where Kanye appears in front of 70,000 plus people. And again, from a seemingly rough spot. And what does he use Runaway to do? I need you to run right back, baby. More specifically, carefully. Again, not to apologize, but simply to ask vulnerably, boldly, please come back. The exact opposite of the song title. The Larry Hoover outro to me is Runaway running its full course. In my opinion, this was always the fate of the outro. I say that from a point of hindsight, obviously, but having sat with about 10 years worth of Kanye's words, it makes sense like this in my brain. The man who wrote a song about arrogance, fame, identity, and accountability uses the same principles and the same songs to try and recruit what was probably the most precious thing in his life. It's bold, vulnerable, and most importantly, very Kanye. I think that's it for this one. Let me know how this makes sense in your brain. This video took a lot to put together, so I would definitely like to hear your thoughts below. Tell me what you think of Runaway. Tell me what you think of Kanye's arc. Tell me if you think Kanye's happy now, whatever. I want to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.